The Habs keep rolling with another huge win against the Penguins. Hoffman scores the OT winner, Suzuki gets a couple points, Caulfield scores, Anderson scores, Doc gets a couple assists. We have so much to break down, so you won't want to miss this Game Reaction Edition of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome to this amazing Game Reaction Edition of Habs Digest. I'm your host, Josh Goss, and back with me is my co-host, Jesse Poirier. And before we get into the video, quick reminder, about 82% of you guys who are watching are not subscribed. We have daily content reactions to every single game, so if you don't want to miss any news from Montreal, we got your back right here at Habs Digest. Jesse, what a game. I mean, I, <laughs> what are your thoughts on how that game went? That was maybe the most entertaining game of the year, and the only game that's close to it is our last game against the Penguins that ended in a very similar fashion. What a roller coaster of a game. You know what's so great about this, Josh, is that we're beating teams that are projected to contend for the Stanley Cup. And this isn't just a one-off. We've been doing this all year. We've been sticking around with some of the best teams in the league. So I'm just blown away at just how resilient our team is just every time they were controlling a lot of the game tonight, but whenever an, an unlucky bounce would kind of go their way, um, you know, they just got right back on the horse again and just kept powering through. And you know that Marty St. Louis has to be really proud of the boys tonight. I mean, I hope he is because I sure am. And, you know, I've mentioned this in a lot of, a lot of times before, uh, in previous games, Montreal has maybe shot themselves in the foot when they've had a good rush or something, but they've always been good at, pushing back right after another team scores or has another big play. And that was most evident tonight. Every single time Pittsburgh scored a goal or even just maybe got on a power play and we killed off a power play, uh, man, it just felt like everyone on Montreal was working their hardest and we had some of the best bounce back shifts that I've ever seen. Um, Pittsburgh scores and I think we had three or four chances after Pittsburgh's second goal where we were just right in there, like firing on the rush constantly. It was just everyone was buying in tonight. The effort from everyone on the ice was outstanding. Um, well, I mean, I guess we'll maybe tackle this in chronological order because there's, there's so much to talk about, but I thought it was awesome right off the bat, less than two minutes into the game, Josh Anderson himself, the man just served a two game suspension, his first game back on a bit of a different line. Uh, he was playing with, what was it? Dadanov and, uh, and Monaghan tonight, which was a bit different, but he came in first shift of the game for him and he snipes it from the top slot. Uh, I couldn't be happier to see him scoring. I mean, what do you think that does for a team when a guy who was suspended? Ended, comes back and lights the lamp that early into a match well anderson has so much potential right he has the speed he has the size and we've seen at points during this year what an amazing shot that he has so i mean we're a pretty deep team when you actually start to think about it we do have lots of skilled players it's just a matter of converting on our opportunities so when anderson's playing like he is tonight we're looking like a really dangerous team yeah i mean we were saying like Coming into the season, I thought Montreal had great forward depth. But the problem is, these forwards that we thought were great for third or fourth line have just not been producing. Guys like Dwayne, guys like Hoffman and Dadanov. But that Dadanov, Monaghan, Anderson line tonight was quite good, I thought. Especially Monaghan. I didn't really notice Dadanov, but the line was doing well, so I can't really complain. And someone like Hoffman, who seems to be back on track now. He's, he's scoring goals again. He had the overtime winner tonight from Kirby Doc. Right place, right time. Beautiful finish. I mean, that wasn't an easy tap-in. I mean, Kirby fed it right across, but... I mean, Hoffman is almost, he's a left-handed shot on the left side of the net with almost no real estate, and he hits it right off the side of, I believe, Jari's body into the net. Um, I think it's awesome uh, that we're getting this production finally from these guys that were sort of underperforming to start the year. Do you think this is a step in the right direction? Do you think we'll start seeing things roll a bit more? Do you think Dvorak might get rolling? Do you think Dadanov might get rolling after seeing some of these guys finally get some points? Yeah, well, we're getting hot, right? This is our third uh, win in a row now, you know. To, so, I mean, um, you know, like even Dvorak has been looking good these last couple of games. Like he's making those smart plays, as you like to say, Josh. Like he doesn't make too many mistakes. And when he's making plays, he's looking to drive the play to the front of the net. He's making dangerous passes. So you got to feel like it's going to come around, but he's really playing his part. We're doing, he's doing a great job at the face-off circle, which I mean, all of our centers, we know we were deep there. And to see that, you know, actually converting into a lot of face-off wins, which combined with our strong forechecking tonight, I really felt were our keys for victory. I mean, whoever doesn't think that this Hab team, this Habs team isn't skilled, doesn't know hockey at all. Because as we're watching the game tonight, like 
Suzuki is looking like the smartest guy on the ice. Yep. And yes, I know that Crosby was playing tonight, but there's, we're seeing a little bit of a passing of the torch tonight. We're seeing that Cole Caulfield is looking dangerous every time he has the puck on his stick, even when he doesn't, even when he's just in the offensive zone, right? Kirby Doc is looking like the top three draft pick that he is. I mean, who needs the draft when you got Kent Hughes, you know, who's such a wizard, you know, who's drafting young skilled hockey players like this. I don't think any GMs are going to want to do any business with them because he's just absolutely just fleecing everybody right now. Yeah, that trade looks amazing so far. I mean, Doc with another two assists, and I will play the little Kirby graphic. I mean, he's been he's been outstanding the last few games. Um, and again, as we mentioned, every time, every, every video basically since he's been put on that top line, the man has just been getting in the right spots constantly. He knows exactly what he needs to do. He's fighting along the boards for the puck. He's using his big body to create space, but he's also making sure Suzuki and Caulfield have tons of space to work with. And that Caulfield goal tonight, that whole thing was completely created by Kirby Doc. He goes deep into the offensive zone behind the net, takes a big hit, but keeps the play alive with the puck, goes back to the point, I believe it was Suzuki. He taps it to Caulfield. Doc immediately, his big body right in front of the net and starts getting pushed, starts getting pushed. An amazing screen for a seeing eye shot from Caulfield from the point. Sure, Caulfield gets credited with that goal, but if Doc didn't fight for that puck down low and then screen the goalie as best he could, that almost got called goalie interference. I'm glad they didn't call it because the only time he was really in the crease was when he was getting pushed by the Pittsburgh player. Um, man, he's just been outstanding. And speaking of that line again, Every single night that that line is producing. Suzuki with a goal and an assist tonight. He could have easily had two goals. Um, we're super glad he had that first goal. I mean, he, he created that first goal out of almost nothing. He just gets it right into the slot. And then he decides, I'm just going to dangle two people. Gets right near the net. Tries to feed it across the dock. The defense stops it right back to him. He's like, okay, I'll put it in myself. And he scores that. Almost had a second goal in the rare three-on-three -three in regulation that we had. Um, where he just had a beautiful deke to the backhand. But Jerry made an amazing save. Uh, but that whole first line was clicking. On, firing on every cylinder tonight. And... Jesse, I'm just going to ask this question. I've, I've sort of, I asked this a bit earlier in the community post on the channel. I asked how many points you think Nick Suzuki will finish with this season. I want to know, like, I want to get some predictions for how many points Suzuki and Doc might finish with and how many goals Caulfield might finish with. Just some quick ballpark numbers because I think, like, right now, it's, it's, I don't know if it's sustainable, but it feels like why wouldn't it be? Like, this team is clicking every single night. We're beating good teams. We seem to have great team chemistry. Maybe we'll hit a wall, maybe not, but... Um, first off, how many points do you think Suzuki will finish with this season? Ballpark. My, I'm saying somewhere between 80 and 90 points. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're right on the money. You know, the first thing that kind of comes up is, uh, you know, at least 80 points so far this year. Um, what a tremendous leap, right? From last year where he was still a really great player, you know, getting over that 60 point mark. Uh, but we're just seeing a completely different player this year. He's just hit a new plateau. I mean, just some of his dangles, right? He's like, he's deking like he's in a telephone booth there. I mean, the guy's just looking dangerous every time. Um, and, you know, you put Doc into the picture now to really complete that first line, which I think that's what was missing for Nick to kind of take it to the next step in his uh, point production. I think that we have that now. So I think easily 80, 90 points for himself. Uh, Doc, you know, I think we're really seeing a re-emergence with him. I wouldn't be surprised to see him getting around 60 to 70 points. And Caulfield, like, we're not even joking around. Like, my new nickname for Caulfield is Cole the Real Deal the Caulfield. The Real Deal Caulfield. <laughs> this guy... This guy ain't no farce here. This guy's going to be scoring goals. He is one of the most exciting players to watch in the NHL. Mm -hmm. You know, like, he is. It's a bar, bar none. Every time he gets the puck, he's doing something with it. You can just see the crowd is just on the edge of their seat every time he gets the puck. And for good reason, you know, he's getting these one-timers. You know, it's like he almost could have scored, like, five goals in this game, right? You know, quite realistically, you know, so uh, for Cole, you know, I can honestly, like, we're not just blowing smoke. Like, honestly, I could see 40 to 50 goals. And, you know, I really believe that he can get over 50 this year. 
Yeah, I I think for Doc, I was see it's kind of boring when we all have we always have the same opinions, but I mean I think it means we're both pretty level headed. I think if we saw sixty points from Doc, I would be ecstatic. I'm gonna sit at fifty to sixty just so I'm a little different from you because he hasn't crossed I think over like much over thirty if anything in his career so far. I'll stay at fifty to sixty, but I'm optimistic. And Caulfield, I don't care. I'm saying fifty. I've said it from the start of the season. I'm gonna say fifty. He's he's fallen behind pace maybe a little bit right now. I think he's at what nine goals in fifteen games. Uh, I'm not sure what the pace is. Let me do the math real quick. Uh, let's just check this. So nine goals in fifteen games times eighty-two. That's pace for forty-nine point two. So he's falling behind a little bit. Suzuki is on pace for fifty. He has ten goals, nineteen points in fifteen games this season so far, which is absurd. Um, but yeah, I'll say fifty for Caulfield. I'll say fifty to sixty points for Doc, and let's say let's say ninety for Suzuki. I'm super hyped. Um, but you know, we talk so much about these guys. They're the first line, obviously, but I thought tonight, just as well as other nights, I thought our second, third, and even fourth line played some amazing minutes. Um, guys like Yoel Armia, he's on our special teams. He played a bit of power play time tonight, a bit on the penalty kill. We had like Brendan Gallagher with so many chances and a classic galley shift where he goes hard into the boards with Gensel and just getting, <laughs> getting punched in the face right in the corner. And that's what sparked those penalties to send it to four on four. Um, Dvorak, amazing on the power play and penalty kill again. I mean, what do you think of our depth guys? Again, we sort of mentioned this before about points, but I want to, I want to know whether you're seeing the same thing as I'm seeing where these guys are just working like every single guy early in the season. We were complaining that some of our vets maybe weren't working as hard as they should have. And it felt like sometimes there was some effort left to be desired from these guys on the ice, but it hasn't felt like that the last few games. Are you seeing that too? Are you seeing our veterans and some of our you know lesser known guys step up and really work their butts off to make sure this team is in a better place? Yeah, I'm definitely seeing that. You know, I'm really impressed uh, with that last goal from Hoffman. You know, as, as Dom Cherry would say, keeping your stick on the ice. You know, that, that was that big difference, right, for for that tap-in to, to finish it, you know. So, yeah, I've been really impressed. It seems like he's got his confidence back. And what a different player that we're seeing, right? You know, uh, even Drew Wang, you know, I love that. You know, him taking a shot on that power play is what led to – one of our goals tonight as well. Um, you know, so we're seeing slowly but surely that the teams are really buying into the concepts here and uh, the game's coming around as a result. Yeah, I mean, again, we're you create your own luck. That's the, you know, it's a saying as old as time. You can play as well as you want, um, but the better you play, the more opportunities you put on net, the more pucks you put on net. You, you say you put the puck on net, good things happen. You know how many shots we had tonight? We had 43 shots. We had 40 at the end of regulation. That's a season high. Funnily, just beating out our season high against Pittsburgh uh, a couple games ago when we also went to overtime. But we outshot Pittsburgh badly this game. Uh, like I was saying to you before we started recording, in the second period, it felt like it was going to be one of those classic Montreal solid first periods. We were kind of all over them. We outshot them to a second period where it just felt like we were getting dominated because Pittsburgh was all over us early. But after they scored, we just bounced right back and it felt like we never let off the gas the rest of the game. Um, and I thought we outplayed Pittsburgh from the first whistle to the final horn because, I mean, if, even if you look at two of Pittsburgh's goals, sure, it was 4-4, four to four, and Allen's stats don't look amazing if you just look at the box score. But that first Petrie goal, he it went off a Montreal defender right past Allen. There's nothing you can do. That second goal that Pittsburgh had, a clearing attempt went right off the ref, right to the center of the ice, where they fired a shot that Allen wasn't expecting, and it went top shelf after it deflected off someone. I, I mean, we scored four legit goals, Pittsburgh scored a couple a couple lucky breaks for Pittsburgh. They're, not them saying they're not legit goals, but there was a couple lucky breaks that really went their way. But Montreal still fought back. We had over 40 shots, and we really created our own luck tonight, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, pretty amazing to see, to be honest. Uh, you know, just the resiliency, like... As, as you said, Josh, like, I really believe that we deserve to win the game tonight. Like, we controlled that first period. I thought our forechecking was amazing. I thought our defensive positioning, like, for a good part of that first period, you know, until, like, the very end, Pittsburgh, you know, having about three, four shots on net, they were having a hard time getting through the neutral zone, let alone getting any time whatsoever in that offensive zone. And then, you know, we take that penalty to kind of end the first, and then you see a little bit of that momentum off that bad uh, sort of second goal, kind of a little bit of a lucky bounce. So you see kind of Pittsburgh get into a little bit of a flow, but I mean, we just jumped right back. We controlled it for a large after that, you know, the second part of the second period and then the third period, even though it was back and forth and we kind of had to wrestle our way back into this, we were still controlling the play. This is a game that we 
really deserve to win because for a lot of our young players, they need to be rewarded with these wins. They need to know, okay, if I'm playing by Marty St. Louis, um, you know, his style of play that he wants us to play, that it's going to pay off. And they're getting to see that tonight. They're getting to be rewarded in all the right ways. We still made a couple of rookie mistakes kind of to be um, expected, but the fact that we can still kind of pull through and show a lot of character and still come out with the W, it says a lot about our team. I thought our defense tonight, especially like our, your, the four checking, you're dead on. Our four checking, especially after Pittsburgh goals, was insane. It's what led to a few goals. I also wanted to shout out our defense because you made another great point. Like Pittsburgh was struggling to get through the neutral zone, and when they were in the offensive zone, I feel like we were really containing them and holding them to the outside. They weren't getting very many dirty chances in near the net like we're used to seeing this season. We've had a number of times where Montreal defense lose a man, and we get a little backdoor, little backdoor slash, and a rebound, right? A little few things like that, but it wasn't really happening tonight. I thought our, our defensive mindset was great, and I thought our defensemen themselves were awesome. Savak, I thought, had a great game tonight. Uh, he was all over the ice. He had that awesome you know, bee sting hit on Jake Gensel. That was so cool. Um, Caden Gooley with another two assists tonight. Harris was good. He drew the penalty on Chris Letang. Um, that ended up with a power play goal for Sean Monahan, who we haven't mentioned this game, who was awesome again. Um, I thought our power play looked good, especially with Arbor Jack Eye, another defenseman manning that head manning that second power play with Chris Weidman being a healthy scratch. Um, I mean, our defense is improving every single game, and I can't wait to see what happens when Matheson comes back. Now, Jesse, you haven't been here the last couple of videos. I've been discussing a bit about what we think is going to happen because Matheson's back uh, in a non-contact jersey at practice, so he'll be back soon. Uh, and I put out a community post saying, like, what do you think? Who, which defenseman's the odd man out here? Kovacevic? Jack Eye or Weidman, and the overwhelming majority of people said Weidman, because if we want to send down Kovacevic, he has to pass through waivers, and I'm not sure he will at this point. And Jack Eye, yes, we can send him down without consequence, but do we really want to? The man has been so impressive to me that I don't think he deserves to lose his roster spot. So do you think it's feasible we'll waive Weidman, or do you think something else might happen when Matheson finally comes back to improve this decor? Yeah, that's, um, you know, who would have thought that uh, Jonathan Kovacevic would be having such a great start to the year, kind of coming out of uh, left field and just playing great. But doesn't that just sum up our whole half season, how nobody was really expecting for us, like we knew that we would show glimpses of great play, but to really be bringing it kind of night in, night out, I think it's just so uh, exemplary of uh, how our season's been going so far. So yes, if it was uh, my decision, um, you know, I like the look with, uh, as I mentioned, you know, kind of having somebody else on that, uh, on that second power play. I really like Jack Eye there instead of Wyman. I think he was making great decisions again tonight. You know, those seeing eye wristers, uh, from the point, making great passes, showing a lot of composure, uh, while still offering that defensive stability. If, you know, things do hit the fan that we still do have that safeguard. So, I mean, I trust, uh, Jack I more offensively. I trust him more defensively than Weidman and no, no slight against him. I believe that he is a great NHL defenseman, but I mean, who would have expected for all these young NHL de defensemen of ours to play so good? It has to be one of the best feel good stories in the whole NHL right now. Yeah. I mean, I coming into the season, I was like, okay, well, Jack, I, he's lucky because Matheson's hurt and, you know, Gooley, we'll see how he does. Look great. He cracked the opening night roster, but like, man, Gooley's maybe our best defenseman and Jack, I is like improving at a rate that maybe we haven't ever seen. I mean, there was an article just a while ago saying Jack, I is one of the most improved hockey players. Um, the author, I forget who it was, had ever seen just his sheer, just from absolutely nothing to like NHL ready on the second power play. Like, just shocking right um who knew we'd be in this dilemma i mean we thought maybe with the forwards we'd be in a bit more of a dilemma which we have been and i mean we had to waive rem pitlick but he cleared waivers so maybe he'll be back sometime soon if we get some more injury trouble but and we got we got slavzilla coming back not too long from now i mean this is the second game of his two game suspension i can't wait to see him back on the ice um just quick, quick little question, I guess, before we end off the video. Who do you think is going to come out of the line for Slaff uh, in our next game? Uh, my, my guess is Duane. I want to know what your opinion is. It's a good point, yeah. Um, I would say probably either Drouet or Dadadoff. Um, Marty's kind of shown an ability to kind of switch up the wings, you know. We're seeing that it doesn't matter as much, you know, which side you kind of traditionally play. He's going to put his best players uh on the ice at this point and I think Slav is going to really benefit from having some time just to really watch the game 
uh, from upstairs. So he's just going to be raring to go once he's back. So I can't wait to see that. I can't wait either. That next game is uh, coming soon. Uh, what what day is that? Let me let me check that real quick because I mean I'm just excited to see Montreal play again. Okay, we play the Devils on Tuesday uh, in Montreal. So that'll be that'll be a fun matchup. I don't believe we no we haven't played them yet this season. Uh, we get to see uh, my newfie boy Dawson Mercer in action. So that'll be a bit of fun. Um, but yeah, we'll be right back talking about uh, talking about that game and some news videos in the meantime. But uh, I think that'll do it, Jesse, for for this game reaction edition of Habs Digest. Again, if you guys enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Our subscribers are going up like crazy. The consistent viewership has been amazing. Every video basically is getting as many views as we have subs which is so awesome to us it means that you guys who are subscribing really love our content and we love putting it out for you so we have no plans on stopping we'll continue to do that and we really appreciate everyone who's watching i'm josh goss for my co-host jesse poirier we'll see you in the next video